And good evening, everyone. I'm Julie Kelly. Thank you for joining us. The Virginia Department of Transportation is not taking any chances with the weather overnight. I was thinking about what is in my freezer that I could pull <laughs> out and cook on my grill in case I lose power Saturday. You may want to start thinking about that, too. Then to be selected as one of just four in the country yeah. over flip-flops. So, speaking of flip-flops. <laughs> Might as well get yours out. Right. I can really see both sides of it. My mom stayed home with all four mm -hmm. of us up until I was in kindergarten, and then she was a teacher, so she was home in the afternoon. So mm -hmm. I feel like I kind of had the best best of both. That's the same as I think with my mom. Stayed home for us and also a teacher. Yeah. I kind of want to go home and call mom right now. I know. That story. I know. It makes you really proud either way. Oh, yeah. Whatever your mom's doing, you know she's working hard. Yes. We're mm -hmm. heading into the weekend. Of course. TGIF. No matter who you're rooting nope, for, at all. go Saints. <laughs> You're about to get some powerful storms, mm -hmm. and the best thing you can do is take some precautions, get to a safe area. And can we go back to the live shot outside um, near the Woodstock area, just so we can mm -hmm. give people a sense of what it does look like outside at this point, yeah. that moving east and moving at a pretty good clip, Drew. Even if it's not a tornado, the yep. winds, having been in Louisiana, yes. the winds can throw things and exactly. it can be just as dangerous even if it's not a tornado. Yeah, so exactly. you really want to take cover, get inside. Mm -hmm. One of the towns that's really about to get hit is Middletown and we mm -hmm. have Mayor Mark Brown on the line with us. Mayor Brown, can you hear me? For you guys at this point, what's the message you want to send to folks in your area? Please stay on the line. Drew has some updated information. We're just going to keep you on the line and let him update it for us. Yeah, You're out of that tornado warning, but we are now still under that thunderstorm warning till about 7 p.m. So that's so, some good news. Yeah, Mayor Brown, you heard, Did you, were you able to hear Drew say that? Yes, yes, uh, and that uh, certainly is some good news. Yes. Yeah, a little bit of relief, I'm sure, down by you guys tonight. <laughs> All right. Basically, we're going to stand by. We're going to keep an ear to, uh, of course, to uh, TV3 and uh, to our uh, mm -hmm. uh, watching the radar down here. And if anything does develop, uh, uh, naturally, we'll be available to speak with you. Uh, Mayor Brown, we appreciate you updating us and keeping everybody down there safe, helping us to do that, too. Thank you so much. This is Spike. Spike is Aaron and Tiffany Spade's 12-year-old Boston Terrier Chihuahua mix. And like the sign on the fridge says, Tiffany thinks of herself as his mom. It's, it's hard, but he's going to make it. He'll be okay. Spike was diagnosed with diabetes three months ago. The Spades spend about $25 a month on insulin. He gets a shot of insulin twice a day. Good boy. She says Specialized surgeries like this one at Linden Heights Animal Hospital are happening more and more. This cat is having its teeth treated to prevent dental disease. We can x-ray the teeth and see which ones need to come out, which ones are injured or damaged, deal with them appropriately, um, extract them. We can section them by using high-speed drills, section them easier to remove. And if they've only got a, a small chip or crack on them, we can apply bonded sealants like they use in people. In fact, the American Pet Products Association says pet spending jumped 8% in 2010 to more than $13 billion. The APPA anticipated it to grow to more than $14 billion last year, another 8% increase. There are a lot more specialists around. There are surgeons, there are ophthalmologists, there's cardiologists, neurologists, dermatologists. All for dogs. All for, do all for pets, all for dogs and cats. Dr. Joseph Schmidt says the standards of care have changed a lot since he first started out. I graduated in 1982. He says managing pain and preventative care are the focus now. He's seen the change professionally and reaped the benefits on his own pets. You want Mango? Let's go. Mango is just a pup, but he had knee surgery a few months ago. My own dog, Sailor, is 12, and she has some arthritis in her hips. We noticed she can't jump as well. So she is on arthritis medicine, and also she has joint support medicine that she takes. This is the western side of medicine, but doctors here in Winchester are also exploring the eastern side of medicine and bringing that into the practice to help with things like arthritis. Oh, you're a good dog. And Jack puncture him, and you know, in a few days he's walking around better and more comfortable. Obviously, you've done something. Yeah, but, you know. You and, start to believe. No, that you start it to believe that it, it's it. not. You know, it's not psychosomatic. I mean, they, the dog or a cat has no reason to believe that that you've made them, you've done anything to make them feel better. 
Back at the Spades house, they can see the difference the insulin treatment is making. Spike has lost some weight and is feeling better, a big relief for his mom. You know, I have my husband and stuff, but you can't replace the love from a dog. And good evening, everyone. I'm Julie Kelly. Thank you for joining us. The Virginia Department of Transportation is not taking any chances with the weather overnight. There will be two people stationed at each VDOT location in our area starting at midnight. The trucks are ready with the chains attached if they are needed at any time. After the recent surprise snow, officials are prepared for any bad weather we might get overnight. And with so many people commuting into the D.C. metro area from here, any time there is a chance of rain, ice or snow, they know their morning may be a little bit tougher. TV3's Brian Kaufman spoke to commuters tonight about the precautions they take and their mindset when bad weather is in the forecast. When and meteorologist Drew Tuma is tracking conditions. Drew, we're really in for a drastic change when we step outside tomorrow morning. It kind of was Julie. Dangerously cold. Thank you, Drew. We have an update on a story we first brought you last night at 11. TV3's Channing Frampton reported on Max, the canine officer in Frederick County who passed away, leaving the department without a dog. We heard from the Frederick County Sheriff today. He told us that officers with the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol saw the story on our air and got in touch with him right away. They told him that there may be a replacement canine available. The sheriff is talking with them about the possibility as Frederick County works to get at least one canine officer on the force. And from an officer serving honorably to another facing charges tonight, a Harrisonburg police officer is accused of beating a cat to death with his nightstick. Tim Ronka has the details and reaction from the man who saw it happen. An officer, Snotty, was put on leave this morning. He'll be prosecuted by the local Commonwealth's attorney and the city of Harrisonburg. In the meantime, police say they have already begun to review their animal policy to make it more clear. I take it as information. Considering what she discovered, Jill Donnelly, who is rather calm about it. And you can type in Virginia State Police. I um, search by zip code, and by zip code, it will pull up all the ones in the area. And yeah, right down the street. Down this quiet street. <laughs> Where you might think barking dogs are the biggest problem, Donnelly Who discovered a sex offender. It's powerful to know your neighbors. Especially with a young son who loves to ride his bike. What I can do is use that as information to say, hey, you're not going to ride your bike down that street. How about we go this way? We have one trooper here that really goes above and beyond. I mean, he's, they fear him. That trooper tracks 264 sex offenders in the area he covers, which does not include Shenandoah County. Here's a breakdown county by county. In Frederick County, there are 111 registered sex offenders. Warren County has 75. There are 72 in Shenandoah County and 14 in Clark County. The city of Winchester has 64 registered sex offenders. Here's something that surprised me when I started digging through the state police website. No matter what house and no matter what the neighborhood, every sex offender that is registered is accounted for in your community. In other parts of the state, some sex offenders come up with a red wanted on their photo. All these are Winchester, you know, the 22601 zip code. In the Northern Valley, every registered sex offender is accounted for. That's comforting to know. If they're a sex offender, we want to know where they're at, we want to know what they're doing, and we want to know who they're doing it with. Donnelly Hu says that kind of vigilance is just as important for the rest of us. To be an informed neighbor um, keeps you safe. 